Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Before we get going on our question for today, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, go to all those corners and do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. And here is our question for today. Which one of these two would you rather have? A motor that has lots of camshaft and less head flow, or lots of head flow and less camshaft? So which one of those would you rather have? Because as we know, if we go down in camshaft, we improve a lot of things like idle quality and drivability, maybe even fuel mileage. So if you have lots of head flow, it allows you to run a smaller camshaft, but which one of those combinations would you rather have? And then obviously the obvious question is, now that we have one combination that has a big camshaft and less head flow, and then lots of head flow and a small camshaft, we have to combine the two so we have big head flow and a big camshaft. Okay, guys, before getting into all the dyno results of comparing our big head small cam to <laughs> and small head big cam, let's take a look at the airflow numbers offered by each of the heads in the test. And in this case, it's instead of uh, Cathedral Port 706 heads and instead of Rec Port LY6 heads. So we're going to take a look at the flow numbers between the two. And you guys can kind of see, hey, why one of these supports, you know, a lot more power than the other one. So let's take a look first at our 706 heads. We have both intake and exhaust flow up here and direct comparisons going from 50 thousandths to 100, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 600 thousandths lift. And our camshaft actually on the biggest one had a little bit more lift than that, but the, um, the flow rates uh, tended to stabilize and even will on the, on the LSF might tend to start going down after that, but it still works pretty well. You can see uh, in our intake lift, we're comparing the 706 heads. And if we go right to the 600 lift value, the maximum flow, 231 CFM for the 706 heads. That compares to 315 CFM for the LY6 heads. The interesting thing also that we have a lot more peak flow, in fact, 84 CFM out of 600 valve lift. But the interesting thing is if we look at the LY6 heads, they flowed better than the 706 heads all the way through the lift range. That's always a good thing. If you get a little bit more or even a lot more at very high lifts, a lot of times that doesn't translate into a dramatic change in power. But usually when you have a cylinder head that imp improves the flow rate through the important part or the middle part of the curve is very important, the top end's okay. But when you get it through the whole curve, starting from 50 thousandths lift, that's usually a good indication that you're probably, that that cylinder head is definitely going to support more power. Then when you combine that with the fact that this thing on the exhaust side also flows more air at 600 lift, we have 194 C CFM for the 706 head and 216 CFM for the LY6 head. Now that's not a big jump like it was on the intake, but you could see again, all the way through the lift range, the rec port head flows more than the smaller 706 head. So the important thing now is, well, how does that translate into power? Well, let's take a look. We're going to run our two combinations. We've got a six liter. We're going to run it with a set of 706 heads and a bigger cam that's going to give us, you know, a little over 500 horsepower. And then we're going to run our rec port head with a smaller cam that gets us a little over 500 horsepower. You guys can decide which one you want. Then obviously at the end, we're going to give you what everybody wants, the big head, and the big cam. Okay, we've taken a look at the difference in airflow between our 706 heads and our LY6 slash LS3, you know, the cathedral port versus rec port. We saw on the cathedral port head, the 706 with the small valves and small ports, 231 CFM versus 315 CFM, the peak flow for the rec port LY6 heads. Dramatically different. Obviously, one of them will support a great deal more power. And the thing that it also does is allow you to reach any given power level with a much milder camshaft. And that's kind of what I wanted to illustrate here. So let's take a look and see what happens when we employ both of these cylinder heads, but with different camshafts and get kind of the same results at the same power level. So we'll see how much the extra airflow is worth basically in camshaft. So we'll jump right in. We've got our six liter LY6. This eventually would become the 1500 horsepower big bang motor. <clears throat> it was run in stock trim. Stock LY6 intake manifold, we did replace the drive by wire throttle body with the uh, 92 millimeter or 90 millimeter fast. We had inch and seven eighths headers on it. We had the factory rec port uh, truck intake manifold, the LY6 truck intake manifold. We did replace the camshaft and we added a valve spring upgrade also to the LY6 heads. The camshaft we ran for this combination was a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 truck cam, fairly mild, 553 lift, both on the intake and the exhaust. 218, 224 degree duration and 113 degree lobe separation angle. We had long tube headers on it, a Holly HP management system, larger injectors, you know, so that we could support the power level that we were trying to make. 
But the interesting thing is with the uh, you know, substantial amount of airflow from the rec board heads. We had a fairly mild cam, 218 cam, um, allowed us to produce over 500 horsepower with this six liter. So equipped in this combination, it produced 503 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 484 horsepower or 484 foot pounds. So now let's compare this to another combination that also made 500 horsepower with this same the same sharp block, but what we did was replace the rec port heads with 706 cathedral port heads. Again, both stock heads, but in order to get this thing to exceed 500 horsepower, we had to step up the camshaft quite a bit. So let's check it. Let's check it out. <clears throat> so here is our 700, our 706 head combination. The 706 yeah. head combination not only made more peak power; it made 513 horsepower. But you can see. It made, it made more power from eh, about 57 or 5,800 on up. In the middle here, they're basically were the same, including the peak torque was the same. We have this nice little torque plateau from 4,500 out to 52 or 5,300. Below that point, oddly enough, despite the fact that it had a much bigger camshaft, we're going to get into that in just a second, the cathedral port headed combination made more low speed torque below 4,500 RPM. So let's take a look at our cam specs on the 706 heads because obviously we had some differences here. The cam that we ran on the 706 heads was a Comp 54459-11. It was it had more lift, more duration, and a change in lobe separation angle. It was a 617-624 lift, a 231-239 degree duration split, and a 114 degree lobe separation angle. In addition to the change in camshaft, we had the we had a valve spring upgrade obviously on the 706 heads. We kept the stock rockers, stock push rods, but we did also have to change the intake manifold. We ran a Dorman LS2, <coughs> basically having tested it many times, the equivalent of a Trailblazer SS intake manifold. Actually, a fast would make even more power on this combination. But as I said, the interesting thing is that even with the much bigger camshaft, with the cathedral port heads, and specifically the 706 cathedral port heads, this thing made more torque down low, with the bigger camshaft. And let me know in the comments what you think. Was it changing compression? We had almost a full point changing compression between the rec port head and the 706 cathedral port heads. Was it the smaller port? You know, was it the change from a cathedral port to a rec port? Was it the change in port volume? Was it the change in valve size? Dramatically different, especially on the intake side between the rec port and the cathedral port combination. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is it one thing? Is it all these things? Well, let me know. But now let's take a look and see what happens. Obviously, you know, we've run the small head and the big cam, and then the big head and the small cam. So now we obviously need to combine the two and run the big head with big cam and see how much power we get. Okay, we've taken a look at our small head big cam, our big head small cam. Now it's time to get obviously the best of both worlds and put our combination together that has the rec port head, lots of flow with a big camshaft and we'll take a look and see. So this is our rec port headed combination with our small uh, BTR stage three truck cam. And we were making 503 horsepower, 484 foot pounds of torque. But here's what happened when we installed a bigger camshaft in this thing. And this was that Comp 459 cam that we ran on our 706 headed combination. And you could see it's a bigger cam. It makes quite a bit more power. In fact, uh, it picked power up from 503 to 541 or 42 horsepower. So quite a bit of power from the cam swap going from the truck cam up and up into, you know, the 231 kind of cam. There are lots of combinations that will do this. I wish now that I would have run, uh, had it been available back then, I would have liked to have run either the BTR Red Hot cam or maybe the Hot Rod cam to kind of see how it compares to this 459 cam that I ran so much back in the day. But you'll notice, although it did pick up power quite a bit, picked up power from about 4,100, it was a little better than the than the truck cam, and a lot better past 5,000 RPM. Kind of typical of an upgraded cam combination. But below that point, below 4,100 RPM, we actually saw a drop in power, and that's not unusual. We'll go from a you know a bigger cam to a smaller cam. It usually you know we see it's going to make more low speed power, not by a ton, but you could see it had differences of 95 to 07. 
you know, 10 or 12 foot pounds of torque. So some, you know, not a dramatic change, but, you know, big changes for 40 plus or, or near 40 horsepower on, on the big end. So this goes to show you what happens when we run, you know, the bigger heads <laughs> with the bigger cam. And obviously there's even more power to be had here with even more camshaft if you have the available piston to valve clearance. I'm Rich Hurlow. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Which of these combinations would you pick? Small head, big cam, <laughs> big head, small cam, or just go big on both.